What's up everybody? Socks way up back with another installment of Sock Town. Today we're going to focus on building out a nature reserve. Like a lot of us during this time of this pandemic and quarantine, I guess we're not really quarantined anymore, but we've been doing a lot of camping. So last weekend we were up north and it inspired me. So we're going to get that going today and that bus stop looks a little too busy. We might have to adjust the red line there. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and get that going, a little nature reserve, some campsites, hopefully it comes out successful. I think it'll be, it'll look cool no matter what, but I'm a little worried about getting traffic there. So this is the area we decided to use here. It is behind the city, so we might have a little bit of a problem getting people to the park. Eventually when we grow out in this area, it should, it shouldn't be an issue. But like every, every other park area, we have to zone it as a district a park district so we do that to begin with and then you can see some of these roads that we already pre-created so we're gonna lay down our main park entrance right on the edge of that dirt road kind of pretending like it's a transition from you know the regular area to a dirt dirt back roads at least that seems to be the way the campsites work in northern Arizona where I live and there we had a little strange thing happen with it but we figured it out so this first area, I was kind of making like a hiking path for people, not necessarily for them to camp in, but I thought that would be a good way to maybe get traffic in. So here you start seeing our idea. We have this dirt road leading to a side gate up on the top of the mountain, and then we're gonna kind of build these loops where we're gonna put campsites in. And I overpopulated this area with trees so that when, then when we add the campsites, we can remove the trees, kind of simulating a real life situation that they do in some of our forests where they, you know, deforest it to give us areas to enjoy. At this point, I'm just playing around with some ideas of throwing down a lot of these props, building out a little campsite for, you know, a couple families that are hanging out around the fire. The fact that they're not connected to the road, I don't really think that's a big I, big deal, but it, it doesn't seem to be ideal. Um, so eventually I do come up with a different idea of, of adding a path, you know, that attaches to the campsite. It looks like people have walked on it a lot, but I'm not 100% I'm not sure. I did about at this point realize how big of a project I picked for a video. This is probably something that we're gonna end up adding more detail, finishing out along the way. And like every other one of our parks that we create or our industry areas, we don't have everything unlocked to begin with. We start with only the level one assets, so we're limited a little bit on what we can build. I did download a good amount of custom assets from the asset store or the workshop so that we could add more designs and more, you know, right there you see some RVs wanted to give it more customization and also here's a little area that we added you can see there's one area there that we moved by a little bit too fast but it's like our, the logging area where you'd get the firewood and um, maybe drop off some trash and probably has a bathroom facility as well but here's another one where we did a little fancy fireplace and some more rvs and some tables for them to sit around while they're out enjoying the wilderness I think it's a great idea for every city to have a campsites like this. It gets people an opportunity to get away from town, get away from the day-to-day -day grind, and just enjoy nature. I don't think we do enough of that as society as I've kind of learned how much it resets me, allows me to regroup for the next week, and yeah. Unfortunately, I realize this video is going to be a lot, really repetitive. There's a lot of the same things going in. That, I mean, we can make each campsite look unique, but it's a lot of the same ideas over and over again. I'm going to kind of let the replay go so you can enjoy it, and I'll be back when there's something more interesting to chat about. So at this point, I kind of saw the flaw in using Move It to move around some of these assets. Um, they're designed to be on the paths, 
so the game gets mad it throws up those little little signs that show no one can path to it i'm gonna be honest with you i'm not sure if that makes people not go to the the campsites uh, i know that there's some mods you can use to get those indicators to go away uh, but for now we're gonna we're gonna just adjust the way that we're building these uh, these campsites or the the park to allow that to work so this next part here is what will end up being the centerpiece of our forest slash camping area. So my first attempt on this city, we're going to start playing with water assets and you can see the challenge here in a few seconds. Um, I'm not the best at terraforming. It's been a while. I'm a little bit out of practice. I tried to make this look realistic. I didn't want it to just be a perfect circle round hole in the ground. I wanted it to make, make it look more natural. I think eventually I might add some rivers as well or creeks um, going through this area but I wanted to get it start with started with a lake and then kind of build around it at that point. At first I put the water a little bit too low um yeah nope it was a little too no actually it looks pretty good but then I was playing around with it I wanted to get it a little higher I do flood the area a little bit which tends to be what happens every time that I use water sources I need some more practice at it to get better but one thing I've learned about this game is when you mess around with water sources, you have to give it a good amount of time before the water actually gets to its sweet, sp sweet spot and stabilizes where it's going to stay for the long term. Sometimes you flood things, sometimes it, you know, looks like it's going to be some rapids right there where we got some crazy waves going on. I usually kick it up to times three just to get past it, and I think it's a good idea to do this prior to having your area populated like if you're adding a lake inside a residential area or around some actual buildings i would say my tip is to build the lake first and then start zoning the area so that you don't have to deal with the potential floods i actually lost a lot of a whole town at once but it was temporary the people move back in once you take care of the flood but it's just something that slows you down if you're trying to make progress on your city uh, I think the water looks amazing in this game, so I do like adding, you know, some lakes like that. And I, like I said, we'll add a we'll add a river later that leads into the lake and then beyond it as well. Uh, but here another little loop that we created for camping. I think that looks pretty pretty realistic, at least like it is up north in in Arizona. And then we just filled it in with some trees to make it not too wide open in those campsites. And over here we do adjust and add the path as well like we were talking about earlier. And I decided I didn't want them to be perfect paths. I wanted them to be a little, you know, nature looking like people just establish them themselves maybe without, you know, having a top down view to make it perfect. So it makes it look more realistic in my opinion. Again, there's a lot of rinse and repeat in this video. I do apologize, but I think it's necessary to get our entire city the way we want it. Let me know if you have any feedback on some ideas that we could put into the camping area. Other than that, I'm going to let this uh, time lapse finish out for you guys and be back at the end.
All right, to end things out, I think we want to take a nighttime view of our campsites. Get a little zoom in so you can see what's going on at night here. It's dark. We got some paths with lights on them for people, but these campsites are dark. As intended, as it is when you are camping, these RVs have some good lighting in them because those people apparently haven't gone to bed yet. But yeah, as you saw earlier on, I did add some bus lines. That was a desperate move to try to get some traffic into our park area. I think it'll take care of itself as we expand the city towards that area. There's more traffic in, in general over there. Um, but that's going to do it. That's not an ideal screen grab there. That's gross. That's going to do it for this episode of Socktown. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm excited about some of the stuff I have planned for the rest of this series. I got it all planned out, written down, episode guide completed. So I know where the town's going and I'm super excited about it. Can't wait to share it with you guys. But that's going to do it for today's episode and I will see you next time.